Hello, sir. How are you? Hey, I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. It's uh, been a long time since we spoke. I know. Uh, <laughs> good to I see you. I was, I know, I'm old now. Uh, we, <laughs> I, was, I distinctly remember pitching you on who should play Hillary Clinton in your movie. That's how long ago this was. <laughs> Man, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, thrilled that you're still making movies. Because listen, oh, that is you. not always the case when you're like, oh, I love this movie. <laughs> to make another one. Um, oh, thank you. But it, it is kind of cool to watch you be able to navigate more than one type of film and to still sort of, it seems, make things that they feel like you're a movie. You know, like if I showed someone this and I showed someone off the black, like they make sense. Like clearly, <laughs> you know, filmmaking style has evolved a little bit, but what you're interested in, I think, still feels pretty similar. There's there's a lot of you in your films. I'm just curious how you make sure that's the case. I mean, you've made bigger films in between. Like how how does it still be yours? Yeah, it's it's one of the it's a great question. And it's one of those things that um I'm only aware of when someone else points it out. <laughs> I mean, it was, I had a friend last week um, when we were just talking about summering and they and they said, it was a friend of mine from film school. Um, and they were like, they were like, yeah, but your thesis film in film school, this short film called Junebug and Hurricane was about a single mother and her daughters. Jeannie Garofalo played the mom. And they're like, you've been interested in this for a long time. And I was like, yeah, I, I guess, I guess I have. I mean, it's, I mean, I try to, as far as a North Star, just always, tell stories that I deeply care about where there's characters, protagonists who are wrestling with the stuff that I feel like is important and that affects me and that I'm afraid of and that gives me anxiety and that I hope to um, grow from and learn from and that characters who I love, even if they're deeply, deeply flawed characters. And um, yeah, I guess it just happens that way. <laughs> no, that's, we were even talking about it back then. Like, you know, but Smashed has a lot of empathy for his character, but does very much hold their feet to the fire. I mean, we were when we were talking about Spectacular Now, I still love it. But, you know, it is not wrong to leave that movie being like, they're not right for each other. Like, he's got a lot of issues and she probably shouldn't be dependent on this person. Like, there's the movies are aware of what these characters are, even if, especially in that one, you're deeply in love with both of these people. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, Smashed... Um... A lot of that came out of experiences that I was having that my co-writer Susan Burke mm -hmm. was having and my awareness that I'd probably been to a half dozen weddings in the past few years where both the bride and groom were drunk, um, <laughs> very, very drunk at their own weddings, which was super funny. They were like adorably drunk, yeah. but it was once you imagine, oh, wow, what if they have kids in two years and the, they're partying yeah. like this, it becomes kind of tragic um, for the child, first and foremost. And yeah, it was spectacular now. Um, yeah, I mean, the movie's about a number of things, toxic masculinity and like who who young men model themselves after um, and toxic relationships. That's all sort of buried in there, which is in some ways summering as some other perspective, some other subjectivity on similar stories and themes. Oh, yeah. Well, that but I think the, the thing that sets it apart is there's a maybe not sloppier way, but there's a much simpler way to have a lot of these characters have that point across, like Lake Bell's character would just be the the exhausted drunk mom you wouldn't yeah. have her sort of snap into action and be also like oh no like this is a good mom too like there are issues but a good mom in the same way like you know miles teller's character wouldn't tell bob odenkirk like no i probably can't make you that promise i guess i can't work here anymore like they there's this extra layer that i think a lot of your movies have that are make the characters feel real especially when you know that's such an easy thing not to have even in a good movie even in a relatable movie you're like oh well this character is perfect or this is just too much of a mess they would be hit they'd die in traffic if this was real life you know that everyone in your movies feels like they're flawed in just enough of the right way that you recognize either yourself or someone else and you know a lot of people i feel like will recognize their childhoods in this movie oh well thank you yeah i mean i you know, I mean, I'm I'm very flawed. <laughs> my, my my family and friends are all very flawed. A, a lot of the issues that the characters in the films um, have have dealt with, um, you know, everyone around me has wrestled with in serious ways. And and I think, um, you know, I think we all benefit, you know, when films have multiple subjectivities. You know, like simple representation is not enough. We have to really unpack and interrogate why certain characters get told in certain ways and recognize their own blind spots and storytellers need to recognize their blind spots, but still try to explore those things. If we want to understand 
things like how structural violence is transmitted through society, like yeah. how, how that happens and how it affects and the collateral damage, the human collateral damage of those things. And yeah, I mean, um, you know, like with Lake's character in Summering, as you're mentioning, I mean, um, I think there's, it would be easy to be very hard on that character or to yeah. dismiss that character. Um, but I have so much love and compassion for that character. And I think for myself, especially as I've, as I've become a parent, I have three kids, I realize that there's many types of privilege. And one of the greatest privileges is just to have time, to have the luxury to be attentive and physically present in the lives of your kids is something that I think people can take for granted. Um, it, um, and and to, to, to not be present in your, your child's life doesn't make you a bad parent. It makes you someone that in many cases has to pay rent and feed your children, yeah. <laughs> which is part of what Lake's character is going through. Totally. And I mean, even, even you, you know, you're making a movie, you, it has to be the focus for however many weeks, months, you know, the shooting obviously, but even just, I have to have this meeting. I can't help, I have to talk to this person about this thing. They have the money, but yeah. you know, when, when kids are young, they don't necessarily understand that. Like there'll come a time where you can be like, remember when I couldn't do this thing? Like, here's the thing I made instead, watch this movie, or maybe don't watch that one, watch this one. Or watch that one and we'll talk about it later. <laughs> but you can you can then have a tangible like I made a thing. You know, yeah. if you go to work at a factory, you can you can sort of say that, but every box is the box. It's not quite the same thing. It's but that's what I think even these movies do well is, you know, a lot of your movies have parents that are overworked and under whatever the thing is, but they get to have their not even like redeeming moment, but just where you see that they are living a full life that we're just not seeing you know spectacular now has that this has that there's there's more to them their 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 movie is going on while we're watching the other one 100 percent. i mean there's a great way of putting it far better than i could have articulated it but it, it's i mean a lot of this film came from that was yeah. was recognizing as a parent and seeing with like my, my wife works at a middle school high school so every year she's got a new batch of 11 and 12 year olds coming in and she's in the middle of conversations between their parents and them and um and just seeing you know conversations between parents and kids and the way that you know uh, parents trying to understand kids and kids trying to understand parents sometimes more or less successfully <laughs> um and and recognizing that we experience and articulate ourselves in different ways um and that kids like the kids in this movie um that they experience and process trauma in a different way than you or i would um it doesn't matter what has happened in the world with technology i mean we can make big statements about technology, bringing us together, pushing us apart, all these oh, things. Oh, you have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I have. Yeah. But like, but when an 11 year old or younger, or what, you know, has their pet die for the first time or a grandparent die or a parent die or a best friend move away, it's always traumatic. And it doesn't make, because a child might express themselves in what might sound like naive or innocent language, it doesn't make them that. It just, they don't have the context of experience of adulthood. Like these kids, what they go through in summering, it would be radically different if they were just the age of the kids in Spectacular now, um, certainly right. if they were adults. Oh yeah, no, I mean, or even just, you know, the thing that I really latched onto is the idea of, oh, we're going to be going to different schools or we may not be friends going forward. You know, that's that's sometimes more of a high school or even like a college, like a big thing in college. Like everyone really goes their separate ways. And I like that they're, you know, it's definitely on all four of their minds, but they're not all as upfront with it because, you know, I was someone who was always like, oh no, I'm not gonna see you again. And there's plenty of people who are just like, no, I'm excited for this new thing. And it doesn't yeah. mean they're not upset about that or they're not gonna process it, but they're, you can tell that they're they're becoming different people, but not in a, in a bad way. They're just, this is a very specific point in your life where you're you're starting to start the journey if that makes sense like high school is very and middle school is very much like figuring out the first steps of who you are like before that you're still you know you listen to the music your parents listen to like you haven't sort of like had your revolt yet and they're like right on the cusp they're right on the cusp and i think the, i mean it's a great point and i mean they you know at, not to generalize i mean these are specific characters and like the but at 11 or 12 like these kids some of them might um present as externally at least as rather innocent you know yeah. and, and earnest in the way that they speak and live in a world of imagination and that might be a coping mechanism okay. they might on the other end of the spectrum have experienced personal trauma a marriage parents marriage falling apart whatever that might make them world weary and cynical i mean within a year or two by the time they're in seventh or eighth grade they're all going to be like in early adolescence on a sprint towards adult yeah, no they're as soon as they as soon as they enter the school and they're just going to see like girls a year older than them who just look like women 
and that's going to be its own issue there there is this like it does feel like this last moment of things are a little simpler than they'll ever be again yeah. but we can have this sort of on the surface simple adventure that allows us to take that step because if we just sort of are dropped in there it would you know we've all had that it wouldn't go super well yeah and i think as an adult it's easy to look at like the stakes of things and um one can forget what it's like to be that age and be dismissive like i think you know for for these for these four girls like their friendship is deeply important to them and they can articulate it in a way that maybe you or i could not maybe with our friends, we were talking about that other thing about the movies you like and the, and the music and the sports that they can, it is the fear of losing their best friend um, or best friends is front of mind. It's real. Whereas the fear of death and law, abstract death and loss might be a little feel further away until they're confronted with it. I mean, with like cha change, different types of change, um, they can affect us in different ways. But for these kids, it's all affecting and a lot of things are happening for the first time for them. Um, yeah. As adults, we can roll our eyes and be like, well, you know, or in yeah. spectacular now, like having your heart broken, that's going to happen a lot. But oh, when yeah. it, anything happens to you for the first time, it can feel monumental. It can oh, feel yeah. like a tiny death. Oh, yeah. Everybody forgets that the thing that happens to you when you're whatever age is the most important thing in the world. And it's just, it kind of has to be. Everyone, everyone needs to feel like they're the star of the movie. Yeah. And not everyone is, but if you don't feel that way, I don't think you're engaged with your life. And that's what I think your movies do so well is everyone does feel engaged with their life, which I think is such an interesting achievement when, you know, no offense, but you're getting older, like time is <laughs> passing, but yeah. you're still able to look back in a way that feels authentic. I mean, we all have that moment. I, I remember so distinctly, you know, I love the like teen coming of age movie, but I remember seeing the perks of being a wallflower and I must've been like 25 or something. I went, he feels a little whiny. And like, I remember being mad at myself being like, I didn't used to think that this would have been my favorite movie like three years ago. Yeah. So to be able to, to look back and, and, and still be able to tell those stories. And I mean, you know, not everything has been younger centric. And this is your youngest sort of movie. Like, how do you, as we wrap up, how do you still make them feel real as you become further away from that? You know, it's a lot easier to talk about a guy who's like, my back hurts. Yeah, <laughs> and my back does hurt. Yeah. Um, but where's I, Tom Hanks? Tell him, tell him his back hurts, I got him. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because you think of, you know, sometimes you look at the films that a filmmaker, um, I'm thinking of other filmmakers that they make, yeah. and then if you knew their life, you'd be like, oh, they aren't always reflective and they don't have to be reflective of the same things. The reality of my life, just probably like yours, like a lot of people, it's a multi-generational existence. I'm dealing yeah. with aging parents who have, the issues related to, to that. I have young children. Um, I have, you know, my wife and her school and like friends of mine that are my age and then friends that I work with that are 10 or 15 years younger and and cousins who are having kids now and th things. But there's just like every and, and a funeral across the country of someone that's, you know, all, yeah. there's all of these generations are happening at the same time. All of us trying to understand each other and trying to relate. And I think like the complexity of that um especially sometimes there's just groups that become marginalized oh. um that don't get represented as much the very young being one the very old el elderly not not being represented as much and the fact that they might interact and be in the same world is part of what our day-to-day -day life is um and i think that's something that i'm just always fascinated by i think a lot of the films that i really love watching are ones that try their best to to capture that because that's what sure. real life can feel like Oh yeah, I think as you know to wrap up. I, I mean, think of that's that's what you do so well is they do feel that way, and it's easy for it not to be. It get, like Kevin Smith always talked about, like after I made Clark's, like I won. I have no reason to ever be unhappy and like angsty anymore. <laughs> so how I tell a story is no longer like it's no longer I just lived it. It's how do I, you know, how do I find that feeling again while not living it? Like you're not a young girl. You'll never be a young girl. Like how do you tell that story? And yeah. I think the fact that you do it so well here is just a credit to your talent and also just continues to make me excited for what comes next. Like keep doing this and you know, in another 10 years, we'll talk again. Thank you. Well, my daughter is a young girl. I wish she could hear that. Um, and yeah, I, yeah. I hope she'd agree with you. <laughs> yeah, listen, it'll be up, it'll be up on YouTube. You can just click it when she's annoyed at you. Good, I will. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure. All right, I appreciate it, man. Take care. You too.